everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Corey Sauter Show here at Studio One. I'm your host, Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University, and we'll take a look at last week's loss to Winona State University, the Mustangs uh, losing that contest at the Regional Events Center by a score of 44 to 19, and we'll look at some of the highlights from that ball game and then look ahead to this week's game versus Minnesota State Mankato over in Mankato. And joining us is the head coach, Corey Sauter. And again, the Mustangs uh, coming off a, a tough loss to a very good Winona State team on Saturday. 44-19 to was the final score a game. Uh, the Mustangs and Warriors were tied at 7 late in the first quarter. And a, a big uh, second quarter by the Warriors uh, opened up a 31-7 uh, to halftime lead. And uh, they went on to, to beat the Mustangs 44-19. Uh, to So SMSU now... Four and five overall, and three and five in the NSIC, and the uh, Warriors now at six and three overall. And coach, as I mentioned, we'll talk uh, more in depth about the ball game and take a look at some of the highlights. But uh, uh, we knew probably what Winona was going to do coming into the contest, and unfortunately, um, we had a pretty good guess that they could run the football, and uh, that's what they uh, elected to do a lot in the contest. And to give them credit, they made some plays and uh, really got after the guys there in that first half. And, and uh, give them credit because they really uh, executed their game plan very well. Yeah, you really have to give them credit because uh, they definitely have a lot of ability and uh, ability alone doesn't get the job done but uh, it definitely helps to have uh, those types of playmakers and uh, they were able to utilize those those guys in, in great great scenarios and uh, put them in good positions um, and uh, again they they ran their game plan very efficiently didn't make mistakes, and uh, when you do that, uh, it's going to be a tough, tough team to beat. Yeah, the Warriors uh, went down and scored on their opening drive. Uh, took just over five minutes, took a 7 nothing lead. You came back at a nice opening drive uh, for the Mustangs and rallied up and, and tied the score. Right, and uh, you know our offense, you know, going in the ball game, we figure we're going to have to uh, score often to to stay with them, but just because they are very good at what they do offensively, and um, you know we were able to put a nice drive together and uh, capitalize on on some of the things that they did defensively, and uh, we really had a big big throw on the, on the touchdown pass. Uh, we had a little bit of pressure in Ryan's face, uh, actually took a big hit on the play, and. Um, Ryan was able to stand in there and make a great throw and a uh, great reception and uh, it was nice to be able to get on the board early uh, against that team and uh, uh, we just didn't get, get in the end zone enough that day. Yeah, well, the key for the Warriors in that first half, I think, Coach, was uh, you know, the, their ability to keep drives alive. I think they were perfect in 6 of 6 on third down conversions yeah. to, to begin the game or into halftime. And, and, and that is the key. We've talked about it each week on the show. And when you do it offensively, um, you know, you keep your drive alive. And it's also just a, a backbreaker to the defense as well. And there's a lot of third downs, uh, even on that opening drive, and they just you know, get that third and long, they pick up a nine-yard catcher or, or something to that nature. And, and uh, again, give Winona credit, but the, those are the tough plays in the game on, on Saturday. Yeah, it was because, you know, there was certain times, too, where they had some third and long, some you know, long-yarded situations, and uh, they did convert on, on several of those. And uh, um, they made plays. They had some, some things set up. They had a, a nice screen that they executed very, very well. And, uh, you know, again, they were just, you know, kept us guessing uh, at times and uh, executed their offense. And, uh, you know, along with that was, was you know, uh, the turnovers. Our defense was able to get uh, two turnovers very early in the ball game and, and really put us in great position to, to stay with them. And we talked about it during the week. We talked about it before the game. Um, defensively or special teams, we've got to get, create turnovers in some, some shape or form. And, and we actually did that. And we have the ball on the, the 36 yard line, the 43 yard line, and, and have no points to show for that uh, was very, very disappointing. You know, we had uh, an opportunity to really get the ball down to the five yard line. We had an opportunity to, to throw a, another touchdown pass. And, um, you know, we didn't. And that's, you know, when you play good teams, you, you can't be, well, you can't wait for that next one because you might not get a next one. And mm -hmm. uh, Winona did give us some, some very, very good situations that we just did not capitalize lies on and that was probably one of the biggest disappointments of the ball game. Yeah, you know, you look at the, the numbers and obviously a lot of uh, yardage uh, put up by the Winona State offense, but uh, you touched on the point. Uh, your defense did a great job of, uh, of getting turnovers and, uh, you know, just stripping the ball. John Kersberg had knocked the ball away and 
Robbie Slinkman recovered, and then Kirk Gosser, who just continues yeah. to have a very good year uh, right there on the spot. It makes an interception, and, and, and as you mentioned, did not get any points. Kind of was the difference in the game, and that you know got that momentum back on the Winona State side uh, into that second quarter. Really, yeah, and uh, you know, football so much momentum oriented game and uh, you know if you if you score there if we get get even a field goal or something out of that uh, it definitely helps our at least our outlook going into that second quarter into halftime and uh, but you know the, the the exact opposite happened you know we, we ended up not doing anything with it they get the ball uh, they score and uh, we're in a very tough situation very early in the ball game yeah and it, of course when you fall behind early you know you need a pass the football and makes you one dimensional and very tough to do and and because uh, you did have some success running the football but you had to leave it for there for a while but start the second half you ran the ball and picked up some first downs and scored on your first drive of the second half and and but again that when you can't be balanced it's just very difficult to move the ball right and we we struggle a little bit in our pass protections uh, especially our our deeper developing plays you know the throws down the field uh, we didn't have the time to throw and uh, part of it was they they're very talented up front uh, we struggled with some of their twists and blitzes um, so we had to go to a little bit more three-step sprint out screens they did a nice job taking away our screen game which you got to give them credit because that's something that we've done uh, quite heavily in the past mm -hmm. several weeks we talked about it uh, last week about mm -hmm. how well we've been doing that and they stopped that so we tried to do some other things uh, and uh, um, but when we did come out the second half, we, we just decided, okay, let's just get back to some basics. Let's, let's run the football. Let's not even care what the scoreboard says because at that point uh, they did have a, a substantial lead and let's just go ahead and play football and not worry about having to throw every down. And that really helped us out, I thought, just coming out uh, with our guys, playing with some confidence. And uh, we were able to get our run game going, get our, our uh, three-step game going, and uh, we were able to move the football against them. Well, the injury bug did uh, uh, bite the Mustangs again last week. Lester Lewis, who led the team, who leads the team in touchdown receptions, did not play. He's out with an injury, but he came back. Nate Fink, you got to return to the lineup uh, as in, in one of your receivers and uh, uh, brought out a, a trick play with him in the lineup. Again, he was a high school quarterback and you know the double the reverse and then the throw back and uh, it's ran twice this year and both times uh, nearly there for a big play and then this time uh, uh, just a little bit overthrown by to, to Warren to Matthews Warren. but uh, it was there and again a good execution by the offense to to give Nate time to throw the football because that is a, a play that takes a while to develop. Right and that was a play I believe we ran on the second series of the mm -hmm. ball game and uh, uh, we were trying to get it called in the first series of the ball game but Field position wise, we weren't in the right spot, the right hash, and so we called it the second series. Um, but uh, it was fun to watch on film because there were so many moving parts in that play. You know, we had, uh, you know, basically a double reverse pass action, and uh, you should see the the Winona State uh, <laughs> defenders. I mean, some guys are covering the reverse, some guys are flowing to Radican, some guys are going towards Finky, some guys are going, you know, so everyone was going every which way. Uh, we were just a little bit off, but uh, it was, you know, more than anything, at least it keeps them guessing, thinking, okay, what, what may be next? And, uh, you know, that's the only really main purpose of having some of those gadget plays is it's nice to score on them, but at the, at the least, at least it gets them thinking about, okay, how aggressive do we want to become on some of these up and coming downs? Well, you look at the defensive side of the football, another nice game for John Kersbergen. The uh, junior linebacker for the Mustangs had a career high 12 tackles, also forced a fumble, had an interception in the game, and, and uh, you know, knock on wood, the uh, linebacking core has taken some hits and of injuries and whatnot this year, but uh, John, it continues just to be a, a, a go to guy on that, uh, on that linebacker position and, and making plays and, and using his speed. and. Uh, you know his interceptions now he's I think he's got four or five in his career during his uh, you know career here at Southwest and he's really been a, a great guy to have on that defense yeah he has he's really had a, a tremendous year and uh, he's made a lot of plays um, very athletic kid and uh, you know he's playing pretty pretty well right now he's, he's kind of uh, been one of our main playmakers uh, with uh, you know Deacon Eva uh, going down with the injury so um, you know the way he's catching the football with some of those interceptions, we're thinking about moving him to yeah. offense, maybe uh, <laughs> catch a few balls for us. So, uh, but uh, no, he was our player of the game this week, and uh, um, couldn't be more proud of the way he's been performing. He's been preparing like heck to to get himself ready, and 
um, really has brought that that group together and has done a nice job. Well, speaking of a player of the game on the offensive side of the ball was Dan Brennan, a tight end for the Mustangs and a senior for your squad. And let's talk about some of the guys that, that maybe we don't get to talk a lot stat-wise, you know, not catching a lot of passes or touchdowns and whatnot, but he obviously stood out grade-wise. And, you know, the tight end has a position that, you know, he can make some catches, and he has during his career, but you've got to be able to block and do other things and play special teams. Talk about uh, Dan's play this year, and uh, he's just been a, a steady guy for your squad here over the you know during his four years yeah he sure has we talked about it at our, at our um, team meeting yesterday and uh, um, he did grade out the highest of, of I think almost all of our offensive players and uh, he is one of those guys that just goes unnoticed because he's a big reason why we're able to run uh, for you know, 140 yards you know net and uh, he's big in our pass protection as far as giving Ryan time to throw in a lot of those eight-man protections um, he is one of those kids that doesn't complain if the ball isn't thrown to him and uh, uh, that's a that's a very uh, nice fresh you know, breath of air because uh, mm -hmm. you know we we're just excited to have him a part of each and every play it makes us better having him out there um, and he's just very multi-dimensional because he can block. He has the ability to catch and make those those big plays as well. Um, but he's so unselfish, and that's that's what you want, especially on offense. You know, you always see it and hear about it all the time. Everybody wants the football. Yeah. You know, and and uh, Dan would love to have the ball thrown to him, but uh, he doesn't complain if it doesn't, and uh, he knows his role. And uh, he has just had a, a phenomenal you know career here because he's what you look for as far as. You know, yeah. just the type of attitude, the type of work ethic. Um, he is always, um, you know, leadership-wise, he's getting all of our guys ready to go. You can always hear him. You know, he's a soft-spoken guy, yeah. but uh, at the same time, when he does talk, uh, the guys listen, and that, that's very nice to see. And I know it means a lot to Dan, um, you know, the way he has performed these, this, this past several and years. And both he and, and Shane Lodegi have had very good careers, and, and both uh, very, very skilled players on the offensive side at the tight end position. And it's one thing, you know, fans notice, you know, and those guys go in motion a lot. How, how do you use the tight end in our offensive scheme? They do go out and pass, you know, and mm -hmm. patterns and can catch the football, but they're in motion a lot. A lot of guys, you know, fans see them when they're sliding across uh, yeah. right behind the offensive line. Are those you know, made to be the, the kind of like a fullback, the lead blocker, and also for play action to them as well. But there's different ways you can use a tight end, not only blocking and, and receiving, but for other things as well. Right, and we, we kind of use our tight end as a fullback as well. They're, mm -hmm. they're kind of interchangeable parts. Um, so we will motion our our tight ends towards the run. We will motion them away from the run just so it's not 100% okay. If they motion to the right, it's gonna be a run to the right. So we, we use them a lot of different ways and then we'll use them on our naked bootleg plays. Um, we will keep them in to protect. We will screen to our tight ends as we saw uh, throughout the season. So uh, we try to use them a, just a lot of different ways so they're just not uh, an easy target for, for defenses to, to key on. And uh, that, that's the biggest thing with those guys is it's nice having really both those guys because you don't have to worry about them they're very good students of the game and going back to Dan he's one of the, the top GPA guys on our, our roster and um, you know just a great kid and, and uh, those those two are uh, going to be you know really missed you know in, in the upcoming years we have some young tight ends that are going to come in and oh. develop and grow and uh, but uh, those those two senior tight ends have done a, just a, a great job for us. Another guy on the offensive line that uh, you know, has played consistent for you in the last year and a half, you know, starting now is Brian Rodas. And, you know, there's a story in this week's local newspaper about him, a two-sport athlete, a very good wrestler as well. And, and that's not an easy thing to do, to do yeah. two sports at the Division II level. He just goes from football right to wrestling. But uh, he's been a steady guy on that offensive side, uh, right side of the offensive line for the, for the Mustangs. Yeah, again, another uh, very unselfish kid because, uh, you know, he by nature is an, an offensive guard. And that's kind of his position um, based on uh, our situation this year. We had to move him out to tackle, and he didn't complain about it. He said, whatever, I mean, just let me help the team in any shape or form. So um, it was nice being able to have him uh, help us out there. 
Now next year, may, we may move him back inside. We may mm -hmm. keep him back outside. But um, again, he is very dedicated. Um, I think the the two sport uh, stuff really helps him out. Just you know, maintaining his weight level and, and the conditioning level that you want to have, and uh, wrestling you know provides that for him. And uh, we're excited that he's able to contribute in, in both sports and help us help SMSU be a very successful athletic program. You bet. Again, uh, good job by those guys. Not often. And you get to talk about them, so uh, it's good uh, to talk about those guys and their contributions uh, to the Mustang football program. Again, the Mustangs lose to Winona State uh, last Saturday, 44 to 19. There were some highlights from the contest, so we're going to take a look at those right now. As the the Mustangs uh, taking on the Warriors at the regional event center, and we'll talk about uh, the defense here first. And as we mentioned earlier, John Kersberg, a nice game, 12 tackles. Yeah, he, he sure has. You can see him here on the left-hand side, and uh, he's able to bottle up their running back, and he's a, a running back you definitely don't want to get to the outside. Offensive side, this is the first drive of the game, and a, a big run for Warren Matthews, and good to have him back in the lineup. Sure is. You know, anytime he touches the ball, he's, he has the ability to take it 8 yards, 80 yards. You know, he, as long as he's getting the proper blocking, even if he doesn't, he's able to make guys miss, and you can see it here. He makes gain out of it. And the Mustangs down 7 nothing, but not for long. Great pass here. Radican takes a big hit, finds Brett Ballantyne. Ballantyne goes up, makes the play, but uh, you'll see from the end zone here, uh, we do get some, some leakage in the, in the middle. We do get a little bit of a play-action fake here, um, and Ryan just steps into the throw, takes the hit, and puts it up for, for Ballantyne for the touchdown. That's a big-time throw by Ryan to get that ball to Ballantyne. Now another John Kersberg and tackle for loss. Very difficult play here. You can see he's he keeps the ball carrier inside, okay, and then he folds back inside to make the play, and that's that's a tough play to make uh, by a backer, and um, you know he he definitely puts a, a nice hit on a hit on the ball carrier as well, and uh, it definitely helps us out uh, overall defensively. Yeah, forced the fumble, recovered by Robbie Slinkman. Mustangs though were not able to take advantage of it, and in, in the second quarter, Kurt Gosser gets his team leading fifth interception of the season. Just an amazing interception you can see here. He, he hangs his body in the air and uh, was able to hold on to it. Um, he is just playing lights out this year, and uh, we're excited about uh, just the way he's, he's performed. And you can see from this angle here, just being able to have that body control. Yeah, the key was getting pressure on the quarterback. Paul Mickey putting pressure up the middle. Mustangs here. Here's Brett Ballantyne. Again, he tied for the team high with five receptions. Yep. Uh, Again, very good protection on this play. No, nobody's in Ryan's face. We get the ball out quick, and uh, Ballantyne makes the nice, easy reception. Key here late in the first half. Radican, amazing uh, play to escape from a near safety and uh, keeps the drive alive and a uh, late hit here, and they got a first down. But watch this play. Uh, yeah, I don't know how he didn't get a safety here. Good thing that guy was 6'8", because he was able to get <laughs> underneath his arms and, and elude the guy, and uh, uh, we were definitely dodged a bullet there. And here in the uh, late second quarter, Paul Mickey nearly intercepts the ball at midfield, but gets credit for a pass breakup. Yep, sure does. And uh, this is a big play because you complete that, and he's going down the middle of the field, and that's a, that's a pretty pretty large gain if he doesn't make that play. We move to the second half, and a player we just talked about moments ago, Shane Ladegi, picks up a uh, reception here for a first down. This is a big, you know, third down conversion. You know, and again, this is what we talked about: is staying on the football field, and, and if you don't make these plays, you you have to punt and you give the ball to the opponent. And and Shane's a, a reliable receiver for us. True freshman Sean Younger had five catches, 71 yards, and he's got some uh, playmaking ability, and he shows it here for uh, this catch in the third quarter. Yep, and the nice thing is we've got uh, three good years ahead of uh, himself, and we're excited to have him a part of our program. Here's Warren Matthews getting the Mustangs back on the board with an exciting 35-yard run. Absolutely. You can see the high step there to, to avoid the tackle. and. Um, you, know, you just you just want to get worn as many touches as possible because uh, these are the types of things that are going to happen the, the more often than not. And that made the score 31 to 13 after the failed two point conversion. Uh, defensive side again, John Kersberg at number eight. There he is, wraps him up big, uh, tackle for loss. This is the first play after that. Uh, you know, first drive that went on ahead after the touchdown. Right, and you can see the momentum started to shift, and uh, those are the types of plays that create that. Unfortunately, the Warriors are able to pick up a third down. They went down and scored. Mustangs uh, stick to that running game here in this uh, third quarter. Yep, we 
kind of remained patient with the run game and uh, guys did a nice job up front and uh, Warren was able to bust out another good run. In the fourth quarter, the Mustangs, we've got one look here at Brett Ballantyne making one of his five catches and then leading into the Sean Younger touchdown. Yeah, play action play here. Brett does a nice job of finding the hole, makes the tough catch uh, over the middle. And then for later on, Sean Younger from 38 yards gets the touchdown. This is uh, Tyler Pashawn. Scramble rules and a great catch and throw. Yep, sure was. Uh, you know, the, the initial routes that we were thrown to really broke down, and uh, Tyler was able to get get out, uh, break contain, break the pocket. Uh, was able to spot Sean and threw it right at that front pylon, and uh, just a tremendous throw and catch. Just got the one foot in, and uh, the Mustangs get the touchdown. And then later on, uh, John Kersbergen, the interception, nice play, good yeah, read. Just a great play, and uh, again, I. We might have to steal him for a few games here to, to catch some balls for us. I, uh, we're definitely thinking about it. Yeah, he has a good read and uh, makes the grab and uh, ends that Winona State drive. And the Mustangs, again, uh, do fall by a score of 44 to 19. And, and one thing that we've done pretty well this year, Coach, has been the turnover margin. And, and, and you did that in the ball game. You're a plus two. And, uh, you know, getting uh, the turnovers that you needed in the contest just couldn't, uh, you know, turn them into points and, yeah. and that is uh, very uh, crucial so unfortunately the Mustangs uh, could not get the victory and uh, again fall to uh, four and five overall and we'll try to get back to the 500 mark this week against uh, Minnesota State Mankato and uh, let's uh, talk about the Mavericks coach uh, they're a team that's gone to the playoffs the last two years uh, they were nationally ranked uh, earlier this season won their first three games but uh, they've been hit by some injuries as well just like the Mustangs have and what do we know about the Mavericks? Uh, traditionally been a very good uh, defensive team over the years and, and it'll be a big test because they've really played well the last few weeks, uh, beating Wayne State on the road and, and then losing a heartbreaker to Augustana this past Saturday. Right, and Augustana has got a great offense and uh, to hold them to, to the number of points that they did and the, the yardage and things, um, they're, you know, we're not sleeping on, on the, the Mavericks by, by no stretch of the imagination. They're very talented. We watch them on film. Um, the record doesn't show it, but they they're definitely have a lot of talent. Uh, um, they're going to be a tough match on the road. Uh, we played well against them last year, but again, we have different players. They have different players, so you really can't compare last year, this year. Um, and so I know our players are going to be excited about getting back to the 500 mark and really finishing the, se the season with a good note. And um, I know that's, that's tough after a loss, after a, the loss that we suffered this past week, but I know we're going to be fighting. You know, we've we've got some really good character kids, and you know that's really not going to be an issue for us, I, I believe. And um, you know, I feel good about it. Yeah, a chance again for the Mustangs. They can win these next two ball games, or at least just win Saturday versus Minnesota State. Then you come home and, and have a chance to beat Concordia and have a five hundred or six and five record, uh, which has not happened very often here at Mustang football. And and uh, but again, we focus on just the game of the week, and that's Minnesota State. And we've got some time here, Coach, before we wrap up. And, and we've talked about a lot of the ins and outs of the program and and what goes on during a week, and whatnot. But let's talk about a road trip. Uh, this will be a day trip, no overnight uh, going to Mankato, but you know, talk about when you guys leave and, and then you know when do you eat and those type of things, kind of because you, you kind of have a set schedule that the guys are used to. And, and then even when they get to the stadium or to the locker room, you know, what is kind of the, the pregame routine for a lot of the guys uh, before they get out for practice? Well, you know, especially for uh, against a, a, an opponent that we're not staying overnight at, uh, you know, Mankato's close enough where we can just travel the day of. So, so what we'll do is we'll end up eating here, and yeah. uh, we like to feed our players um, at least four hours before the game because you know, getting yeah. closer, you, they really don't eat anything anyway. And yeah. uh, so we'll eat, go ahead and eat. Uh, we'll take the bus ride over. Um, we have to allow time for for those guys to get taped and and uh, you know all you know suited up and things. Um, they need some personal time to kind of get themselves uh, ready to go. Um, but this will be an easy trip just because it is a day trip. Yeah. You don't have to deal with hotels and extra meals and, and everything else that, that's involved. Um, but uh, one thing with road trips is just you know maintaining our focus level. Uh, and uh, you're just going into to foreign territory, so to speak. And um, it, it just getting our guys, you know, you know Having that feeling as if we are, we are on on a home game and, and having that comfort level and um, some guys like to get out to the field extremely early some guys just want to go right on the field right before the game you know it's just everyone's different and uh, 
Um, you know, so we kind of leave that up to them as far as how early they need to get out there. Um, some guys will go out there even before our guys go out there and warm up and, and get some throws in and things and then come back into the locker room. Um, but it's, it's really on a personal personal preference. And, and is there a lot of uh, you know, pregame going over the game plan? Or is that pretty much already in the, the book or when they go back down you know, 20 minutes before the game? Or you know, what, what are the type of things that you, do, you and the coaching right. staff are doing at maybe you know, 20 minutes before the game when the, when the Mustangs are in the locker room? Right. Well, it all starts the, the night before. We, we get together the night before and we will go through our offensive game plan for a good 20-30 minutes uh, and really go over some of the tests that we went over uh, that they took earlier in the day. So we actually test them at the end of the week on all the, the things that they need to know. And so uh, that evening we will go over the results of that test, corrections, things that they need to uh, go over again. Um, after that, we'll go over special teams, you know, go over that portion of the game, and then we'll have uh, a kind of a team meeting and just kind of talk about the centralized point or points of, of emphasis for that mm -hmm. particular week. Uh, we then show a highlight film from the previous week. Uh, that usually takes about five minutes uh, to do that. And then what, what our uh, team does is have the captains come up and talk. Coaches will leave, captains will talk, address the team. That may take a couple minutes, it may take 15 minutes, mm -hmm. it just de all depends on the week. Um, the, the day of the game, we will meet with the players. Um, you know, usually during one, once we do our warm-ups, we come back into the locker room and we will go over, you know, just speaking offensively, we will go over our, our first 10 plays of the ball game. You know, give mm -hmm. that, give that uh, you know, the situation, you know, dictates itself. So we'll go over the top, top 10 plays that we're going to run uh, to start the ball game out just so they have confidence going into that first series, knowing what's going to get called. They can get in their mind, okay, what personnel groups are going to be coming in, mm -hmm. um, um, those sorts of things so it's really something that, you know a lot of the west coast teams you know most teams do it now just because uh, players like to know kind of what's coming before it happens and i think that's why we've had a lot of success you know in some of those opening drives and um, you know hopefully we can continue that and uh, kind of get the nerves uh, un unraveled and, yeah. and get ourselves going early in the ball game yes yeah, so it uh, is a pretty unique experience to, to kind of see it and uh, there really isn't Nothing like uh, you know football Saturday, just the the whole the build up and, and uh, the the intensity, and then yeah. the game, and the, and then the joy or the yeah. agony of defeat yeah. uh, afterwards. Absolutely. And uh, they, again, these uh, players uh, work so hard throughout the week that uh, near uh, wins are not acceptable. It's yeah. fun to go out and, and, and win on a Saturday, and uh, we'll hope the Mustangs can do that this weekend in Mankato before hosting Concordia St. Paul for the final game of the uh, season at the Regional Events Center, which will be Senior Day, and we'll talk about that on next week's show. But it should be a good, uh, exciting weekend of football over in Mankato. Of course, the Marshall Tigers are there on Friday night, and uh, the Mustangs will be there on Saturday. So hope the fans can come on over and, and check out a lot of football over in Mankato. So again, the Mustangs, a 1 o'clock kickoff at Blakesley Stadium at Minnesota State Mankato on Saturday. November the 6th. For the head coach, Corey Sauter, I'm Kelly Loft. Thanks for watching this week's Corey Sauter Show here at Studio One. Until next time, go Mustangs.